Bam Bam, Willie Moe Jr. here. Excited about this moment um, because this is the Love You More uh, show. Now, initially it was a podcast, right? And I was just like, man, it's really dope to kind of get into the podcasting world. Excited about it. I mean, really, really excited about it. And then I realized watching you guys on YouTube and watching you guys on Facebook, I realized you, 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 you were invested like it was a show. And I realized we had something a little uniquely different. So to all my Love You More producers, let's just do this. We're going to call it a show, okay? Um, I'm finding everybody $100 if they call it a podcast. Because anybody can grab a mic, right? And anybody can just have a really great conversation. But I think the conversation that we're curating are three things. Number one, they life-changing. Number two, they entertaining. And last but not least, they beneficial for every part of your life. We're bringing on entrepreneurs. We're talking about love. And um, I just feel like Something is about to happen. Um, it's probably about, what was it, 2009 or 10. I remember when I got a guide wink when I did a video about Whitney Houston. And I was like, y'all need to leave Whitney alone. And I was flipping my hat. And then I woke up the next morning, 365,000 people had watched. And it was on World Star, And I knew that God was giving me a wink in that direction. So I kept doing it. And it ended up leading into something that I can't even explain. Like, how a dude that didn't necessarily grow up in church Monday through Sunday end up having one of the largest gospel radio shows in the world. Like, that really shook me. And it, let me, it lets me know that when you get a guy wink, you got to keep moving in that direction. So I feel like this is a guy wink. Now to all my newcomers, do me a favor. Even if you new, subscribe to this channel. Yeah. Leave me a little comment. Okay. Click that little notification bell to make sure that you're updated on everything that we do. We're going to have premieres. And to those of you who want to go deeper and build a better relationship with your nephew to learn some of the things that we're doing outside of what we're doing on YouTube, I encourage you to partner with us by just logging on to loveyoumore.com. Now, it's it's a few of us now, a whopping 15 of us, okay? Whopping, okay? We growing every single day. Only thing is missing is you. Become a part of our Patreon, all right? So, people said, love you more. What does this mean? And I want to break this down real, real slowly because many of you are moving in a direction, moving in one direction, and you've been moving in that direction for so long that you think that's the only direction you can move in. But when you think about the direction, if we can be honest, like it's stressing you out, you like crying at night, you feeling this anxiety. Many of you all are waking up at three o'clock in the morning, can't go back to sleep. You taking Benadryl, them little, them little pink pills. Um, some of y'all even drinking like I would, Jack Daniel honey in the morning just to get that pain away because you are actually not aligned in where you're supposed to be and you're not actually taking great care of yourself. But you know, the Bible says in Mark 8, 31, it says that we are to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And I think in the body of Christ, if you're outside the body of Christ, it's just between us and the body of Christ and Christians. Don't be offended or whatever. I know it's a lot of people here. But I want you to know that a lot of times we feel like it's prideful to love ourselves. Well, I'm here to let you know, after five years of therapy, counseling, and working towards this goal, everybody lives off my surplus over in my overflow. If I'm done, I'm just done. And I'm okay with how anybody feels about it. Unless the Lord himself say, go do it. If I'm tired, I'm tired. I'm no longer co codependent on people's opinions. And I want you to live out this freedom with me. So we decided to create an entity that explores people's lives to find out the moment when they decided to love themselves a little bit more. Now, the guests that I'm going to bring on today require sunglasses because his future's so bright. Every time I see this brother, I tell you, he the coolest thing walking and talking. I've never seen a person with so much confidence. In fact, during the pandemic, I started seeing these shirts all over online. It was talking about millions, billions, and trillions. You know, immediately I started thinking about money. I said, I'll take that first one, that second one, and that third one. And lo and behold, it had a deeper meaning. I'm speaking to a gentleman who's a prestigious musician, Grammy-nominated. I don't want to brag on him, but the boy can sing if he need to. Give him a mic, it's going to turn out right. But the Lord decided to bless him in an unconventional way in his clothing line. And we're going to hear about it today. The one and only Travis Malloy. 
What up, 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 what up? Man, I put my sunglasses on, man. Man. I just, every time I see you, you just, you know what I'm saying? You just got this thing that's like, I ain't never seen your eyes, man. <laughs> guy. If you want to disguise yourself, just take your glasses off. Listen, and I'll be like, I don't know. It's for the vibe. It's for the yeah, vibe. It it's is. For the vibe. I'm so glad to be here, man. Man, you know, funny thing, the other night, um, I posted something with me and a few guys. We was playing golf and we was having a good time. And you sent me a message. And I just felt that energy. I said, oh, he got to be on the show. <laughs> I said, man, listen, we're going to add one more right. to this day right. because I want to make sure that I get an opportunity to tell a story. Now, the thing that we do is we like to create scenarios with the Love You More um, with the Love You More show, not a podcast. I'm going to find you $100 if you call it a podcast. <laughs> okay. And on this particular segment, it's a song called Believer. It's actually a pull-through song to one of the singles. And what the Believer song is about is, you know what? I'm going to just let you check it out right quick. After that little counseling session, wifey and I had a time that night. <laughs> Lord, I was playing so much basketball. You say William O. Jr. would have said that. That mean I was poking and laying up. <laughs> Call me MJ, baby, from downtown. Now I'm rushing to work. Super duper duper tripping. What I'm gonna do? Call him and tell him, yeah, me and my wife, we made up and she put me to sleep and I put her to sleep, sleep. Nah. You ever made it to the office so late that you was embarrassed that you even made it at the time? My boss always had it out for me. So when I walk in, he gonna say, <laughs> Willie Moore Jr., so nice for you to join us. Late. I'm like, sorry, sir. As I take my seat, I end up putting my little church finger up. Everybody in there kind of snickering and giggling. Man, I don't care how mad this dude is. He gonna say. Hey guys, seeing how uh, Willie finally decided to join us, grace us with his amazing presence. Let's just take a five minute break. A break? After I done rushed my happy tail all the way from home trying to get to this. <sighs> Breathe. He lucky I'm a believer. 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 Woke up this morning with a headache all night. of the song is a believer and the scenario is this like literally me and my wife we were going through some things i ended up playing basketball poking and laying up let's go and get that out the way <laughs> i'm late for work and when i walk in it's that same old saying it's like you go to work every single day but you know something on the inside is so much bigger on the inside of you mm -hmm. that everything becomes uncomfortable has Travis ever been in a scenario where you were working a nine to five job and you knew that your season was up? Mm, that's a great question. So ironically, I've actually never worked a nine to five in my mm. life, but I've always been in music and I've yeah. been the minister of music. Yeah, of that's many what I'm saying. Like for a church, yeah. they told me you was like- that, in But that was like on the same level as, as a nine to five to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just clocking into a church or a yeah. pastor or a choir. Um, and I felt like my season was coming to an end. And I remember, you know, I was the minister of music of a church here in Atlanta uh -huh. and I was on the phone with my manager and I said, yo, I can't wait till I don't have to do this to survive. Jeez. And I can just go to church and be fed and go home. Jeez. And literally 30 days later, the pastor called me and fired me. <laughs> so, so he fired you? He fired me. What was the reason for him firing you though? Yeah, if, if I start talking about it, I might have to go up to the office. No, you don't got to go, <laughs> no, go to the nigga office. But like, was you late too much? or No, just I just think it was, uh, you know, a lot of pastors like to hire rock stars. Yeah. But if your light starts to outshine them, Ooh. they can't handle it. Because yeah. pastors have egos. Yeah. And they like to be the only king of the castle. Uh -huh. So not that I went in there with that, you know, with the mindset of being the king of the castle, but right. I have a very big personality, you, you know, you know, I'm very charismatic. People love me. I'm fun. And a lot of times, you know, people that are insecure can't handle that. And that's what I started to feel. So he didn't really have a reason. 
He yeah. just fired me. But I thank God that he fired me because sometimes God creates situations mm -hmm. to force you into entrepreneurship. Yeah. So did so did the firing come shortly after millions, billion, trillion, or, or was it some space in between? So so in October, I came up with millions, billions, trillions, and I wrote it down. And I said, I have a desire to create this clothing line and drop it. Mm -hmm. But I was making such good money. See, here's the comfortable part. Mm -hmm. I was so comfortable financially at the church. Oh, man, listen, I don't want to be spiritual, but I feel the that Lord I, on this thing. You I literally just was like, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to drop it. I'm just going to keep making the money, going to teach the praise team and the choir and going home. Mm -hmm. So after he fired me, I was standing in the middle of my little penthouse with my car outside. And I'm looking out the window. And I said, I just started crying. I was like, God, I need you to do something. Jeez. And he said, I gave you millions, billions, trillions three months ago. Get to it. And literally within 48 hours, I dropped millions, billions, trillions. And the next day I woke up, the whole world was talking about it. The whole world was wearing it. I mean, it just changed my life. I literally made in probably 30 days my entire salary from that church in a year. So, geez. Okay, let's put a bell on that right there. <laughs> so, so, listen, I want to walk through it right now because somebody on the other side who needs to subscribe to this channel, and if you're just tuning in, you just kind of see it. I usually don't wear glasses, but he's so cool. <laughs> His future's so bright. He's shining, so I'm putting this on. And um, listen, let me just tell you, I'm not hiding nothing behind these glasses. Eyes <laughs> white as snow. Come on, somebody. But no, I, I want to walk through this because right now there are so many people who have mandered in the maze of mediocrity for so long. Mm -hmm. And they know, like, and God... God been wanting me to, to do duh, 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 duh. Mm -hmm. Cause what he'll do is he'll download it. And until you make a move, there are no other steps. Mm -hmm. You know, you just kind of fishing until you get to that. Like, okay, I'm about to do it. He said, I'm going to give you million. I gave you millions, trillions, bi millions, billions, trillions, mm -hmm. four months ago, mm -hmm. three, four months ago. Mm -hmm. It's time for you to do it. Yep. What was that first step though? The first step was just, you know, I always talk about, you got to have good people around you who believe in you. Mm -hmm. I have a squad, undeniable squad. They believe in me. They 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 treat me like I'm the the, the Jay Z of the crew. Like, yeah. hey, you got influence. People love you. Yeah. We got your back. Let's set up this website. You know what I mean? Yeah. One of my brothers came over, set the web. I didn't even know how to set no website up. You know what I'm saying? We so were just somebody set up the somebody website. set up the website. Uh, and, and what about the graphic? Like? Man, the, the graphic. I sent it to my guy Devashi. I said, "Hey, I need you to do millions, billions, trillions." I actually at one point had gazillions under there. I said, "No, nah, that's too much." I mean, I that. That's too much. I said, <laughs> "I said, let me just slow it up a little bit." Exclusive. That's we super, didn't know gazillions was that, in it. That's super exclusive. <laughs> yeah. So I so he sent it back to me. I threw it on the you know threw it on the website. Put the mockups together, and I'm doing commercials and dropping it online. And of course, you know because of my my quote unquote celebrity and connection to the music industry, I was able to connect with some, you know, celebrities yeah. and people that, you know, have a huge name to wear the brand. But the truth is, you know, millions, billions, trillions really does the talking. I haven't really had to say anything yeah. because the truth is everybody don't want to be rich, but everybody need money. I tell people all the time, you can't even use the bathroom without money. You got to pay for the war. You can't even flush the toilet without money, Willie Mo. That's real. You know what I'm saying? So, but more than money, it's about elevation. Yeah. So when I started getting emails, when we were getting behind on orders, like, yo, when's my shirt coming? We closing on our house and we don't want to close without millions, billions, trillions on. Mm. I'm buying my daughter her first car and she want to take a picture in front of the car with the shirt on. So that's when it started to change to, this was elevating the minds of my people. Mm. And that's when it went from a clothing line. Shout out to my bishop, Bishop William Murphy. He said, my don't God. call it a clothing line no more. It's a motivational prophetic movement. I like that. And and so it, it's never been that. So, so we, he had to call you and get a smaller size because he's so much smaller now. <laughs> but you know, shout out to Bishop Murphy. Yeah, you know, Bishop he's one of, looking too good. He, he, listen, like, he one of the first people to, to, to go to the website and, and drop a couple hundred dollars on the brand. At that time, he didn't even know me. He didn't? Nah, he didn't even. I mean, he, he knew of me yeah, musically, yeah. but we weren't what we are now. Yeah. So it's just, it, you know, it he means so much too. when people will support you before they can benefit from it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tra if you're just tuning in, Travis Malloy, millions, billion, trillion, that's his brand. And I yeah. tell you what, this thing is taking off like wildflower. I, I, wildfire. I I had, I known you as a mu mu musician, mm -hmm. um, producer, writer, Grammy nominated dude, somebody that you want to connect with because 
you know, he they call him the pen man. Like he can <laughs> pen something up if you need him to pen something. He's penned a lot of different things, but it was always like they'll choose another single. But he mm-hmm. had the single mm-hmm. and it just just did that. Mm-hmm. Like, how did you keep going when it seems like musically, you've always been like one of the most talented guys, but you were always just almost at the cusp of the number one record mm-hmm. in the world. And then all oh, they went with another record. Like, wow. like how are you able to still sustain yourself mentally to move into something else to then go back. Like now I hear that you getting some other type of placements now. Like what was that mentally like for you emotionally to have to go through? I wouldn't say heartbreak, but a lot of disappointment in the music industry, man. I, I can't even tell you my, I've had more heartbreak in the music industry than I've had, you know, in my, in my romance, yeah. <laughs> you know, in life. Seems like you're doing pretty good. Yeah. Man. But you know what I'm saying? Like I've, I've, you know, because a lot of times, you know, rejection uh, creates almost a, a level of depression, mm-hmm. sadness. I've never battled depression, but I've definitely battled sadness and, you know, questioning, was I good enough? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because there are many times where I've been out here doing this a long time. And when you see people, you know, that are less talented than you, less mm-hmm. anointed than you, you know, getting the deals, it used to hurt. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Trying to, I mean, I manifested every moment of my life though. I mean, you know how many times I prayed that I can come up here and do a radio interview with Willie Moore and Katie Bo? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. But I didn't have a publicist. I didn't have a, the billboard hit. You know what I mean? Not that that was you all's requirements, yeah. but you know, the level of the industry, yeah. you got to be at a certain level for me to even call upstairs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for me to even be able to be sitting with you now, it was almost like God said, I'm taking you through the back door. Yeah. What you thought was going to take you upstairs. Now I got something else for you. So yeah. I did deal with a lot. I mean, the rejection triggered the anxiety that I have faced for many years because you said something that triggered me. I've been at the door so many times. Mm-hmm. I've been at the door so many times and I felt like it just slammed in my face every time I got there. Yeah. But, you know, I look at it now as, you know, you know, man's rejection was really, truly God's protection, man. Yeah. I'm so glad some of them labels I used to dream of being with didn't sign me. Yeah. You have no idea. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, thank God to where I am now to being, and I'm not exactly where I want to be right now. Exactly. But mentally, I'm yeah. at a place where I can say I'm grateful for where I am now yeah. instead of, you know, signing those deals that I wanted to sign back then. I would I would have been a slave. Yeah. I wouldn't have even been able to create the things that I've been able oh, to create yeah. today. You know what I'm those saying? 60 deals were crazy. Yeah. So it's like now, you know, I've been able to grow into ownership and, you know, entrepreneurship. And, you know, a lot of the people who didn't sign me wearing millions, billions, trillions today. A lot of the people who rejected me is wearing the brand today. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? A lot of the people who I tried to, you know, do songs with is calling, trying to figure out how Hello. we did it. Hello, how we do it? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, how we do this But you, you know, you said something powerful. You said, I'm one of the most confident people you met. Man, it took me years to be okay with being confident. Mm. Because, you know, we I grew up in a very religious community. Why is, why is church, why, why is, because I didn't grow up, because I, I, I hear that, but yeah. when I came over, some of my confidence, I was like, well, I don't want to be like that because that may be taken. Wrong. Nah, man. That, and I, I begin to like kind of slow it down. Do you know how many times I would be in church like sounding like Kanye, like I'm one of the best to ever do it. And I'll yeah. never forget a lady from the church used to say, uh, you know, s- s- settle down, son. Let somebody else tell you that. Yeah. Why would That's I scripture, though. Why would I wait for someone else to affirm my greatness? Yeah. Because then you become codependent on how people feel about you. Yeah. Now, I don't, me thinking I'm great does not in return belittle other people. Yeah. But I truly believe it's okay to believe that you're great and that you're amazing at what you do. I just yeah. truly don't believe that anybody can do what I can do, just like nobody can do what you can do. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you were graced for this show. Yeah. I don't care how many shows, how many podcasts, mm-hmm. they're not going to do it like you. And yeah. it's okay to say that while empowering other people. Let me get a hundred dollars. I got you. Because I told you, they call it a podcast. We got to find anybody a no. <laughs> <Yeah, cash laughs> hundred He did the podcast. Uh, profit. <laughs> I'm gonna give you my cash. Out. But you know, it, it no. wasn't. It wasn't. You weren't no, supposed no, to no, say real. you're great. You're not supposed yeah. to think highly of yourself. You know what I mean? It's almost like you got to walk around. But when you really look up the synonyms of you know humble, it literally says to think low of yourself. Why would I do that? Mm-hmm. Why would I think low of myself? So I had to literally 
detox from the stuff that I was told to do mm-hmm. in those religious forms. I don't like to say church because I love church and I love the, the way family. I was relay, raised and I love, you How know. How were you raised? I was raised in a religious home. I was raised, I was raised in a spiritual home. I wasn't re- raised in an overly religious home. Okay. So while we were listening to Fred Hammond and Vanessa Bell and John B. Key, we were also listening to Jodeci and Earth, Wind & Fire and the OJs. Got it. You know what I'm saying? So that, and Charlie Wilson. You know what I mean? So, Ooh-wee. yeah, exactly. Ooh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Th- you know, that kind of gave me my mix and, yeah. you know, just being okay. Thanks. Shout out to my mom. But, you know, it, it took me years to get confident mm-hmm. because the truth is you got to have a certain level of confidence for people to not walk over you. Because That's I used real. to be the guy standing real. on the side of the stage waiting on people to come and take a picture and da da da, da And they just walk over me, da 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 And uh-huh. you know what I mean? When you try to do business with them, they try to take advantage of you, all of that. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So I did have to boss up, you know? You know what I mean? So I just think there's a fine line between confidence and arrogance. So what, what was that moment, though? Like, so a lot of people are still there where it's like, whether it's religion, yeah. their own personal rejection, whether it's their own idiosyncrasies of trauma, maybe it's guilt or yeah. shame. And then you move into this culture of Christianity and it's like everything is sometimes false humility. Yeah. Like knowing that you have something, but now you're afraid to speak up because God is going to do <laughs> it and he's going to open up the supernatural yeah. doors. And I remember one time, it's a very prominent guy, and I don't even think he knows, Devon Franklin, he asked my producer one time, and Amid, he told me, he said, Devon came in and he asked, why isn't this guy bigger than me? Mm. And I had to tell Amid, because I don't believe the way I'm supposed to. And he was like, what? I said, it's a lot of doubt in me, man. Yeah. I mean, I make it look big and I know how to make it look good, but sometimes I'm in rooms and I'm in awe that I'm there. Yeah, but guess what? I, uh, when I came in here and sat in this chair before you walked in, yeah. I asked him, I said, what network is this going to be on? Yeah. What TV show is My this daddy. on? What, what, what's happening? What, you know, yeah. what, what deal are you about to sign? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory because to him. that's the level yeah. That I believe in you. Glory to God. You know what I mean? The way you believe in millions, billions, trillions is the way I believe in this show. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now I got this thing now yeah. this freedom that I believe. Like, yeah. I'm like, so we're going to manifest everything. And I'm so glad you said it because I remember calling KD. That's my partner. And and I, and and he called. He's like, yo, we need a partner to do this, 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 and other. And I said, man, I see us now doing TV and all this other stuff. And I'm, I'm starting to see it. But what was that moment like for you? Being a church musician, living in that culture, breathing your your life in the culture. And then what was that moment where you was like, no, no, I love me more than this. Because my friend Larry Reed said it was the moment that you encounter him. <laughs> and I love Larry. <laughs> let, me, let me clear that up. <laughs> let me clear that up. Larry, Larry did not start millions, billions, trillions. <laughs> Larry did not speak millions, billions, trillions. That's one of my uh, big brothers. What I will say that Larry did do is months prior, Larry did call me. He had a dream about me and he said, you're getting ready to be a household name. Ooh. And the world is getting ready to know your name and you're getting ready to make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So I want to say this, we joke and we laugh, but he is a real prophet. I'm, and, I try to tell people And that. he did speak that. Uh, All that other stuff is just like- Yeah, 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 yeah. That's his- uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. His <laughs> So in whatever world, you know, he thought about when he was dreaming about my name being a household name, mm-hmm. but it has opened up okay. so many different doors. And obviously what he spoke, I mean, I've been in ministry all my life, so I've been getting prophesied to all my life. Mm-hmm. What he said was confirmation to, you know, what a mentor had said a year prior, Trini Massey, that was like, hey, when I was sitting on his couch, living with him, sleeping on his couch in 2018, before I moved to Atlanta, mm-hmm. you know, he said, hey, you're getting ready to make more money than you've ever made in your life. Whose couch were you sleeping on? I was sleeping on a mentor's couch, Trini Massey. He's one of my music mentors and idols and inspirations. You know, everybody talks about the celebrity mentors and idols when they get famous. Mm-hmm. But you got I have to shout out the people who I looked up to in my small hometown, Pittsburgh. And that was Trini Massey. How did this talented, charismatic, gregarious amazing talent end up on somebody's couch with this, with all of this in you. I was never homeless. Mm-hmm. I've always had a home. My mom owns her home. Mm-hmm. But 
when you have so much in you mm -hmm. and you're believing for so much mm -hmm. and you're facing rejection, it started to create friction between me and my mom's relationship. And there's nothing that she did because she's always believed in me, but it was just the emotions of when is it going to be my turn? And sometimes I didn't know how to handle communication with my mom because I was living with her at the time. Mm -hmm. So I would just move out and move in with my mentor who understood that entrepreneurial, you know, thing in me. Mm -hmm. And he was able to speak to something that I don't think my mom could speak to. Because sometimes when family is family, mm -hmm. it's hard to receive from family sometimes, if I can mm -hmm. just be honest, you know what I mean? My mom is a very spiritual woman and a, an amazing woman of God, but it was sometimes hard for me to receive from her uh, just from just the fight family dynamics, you know? Mm -hmm. So I ended up moving in with my mentor and he just, I needed that season mm -hmm. because more than the couch, it was the ministry that I received from him. Um, and he, he, I remember sitting on his couch and I said, when is it going to be my turn? He said, mm -hmm. you're getting ready to make more money than you've ever made in your life. Willie Mo, you wouldn't believe how many meetings I've caught the mega bus to in New York trying to get a record deal. You wouldn't believe the how mega many. Bus. Come you remember on, the mega man. bus? Come on, With that little, with the little, with the little TV yeah, boy. Yeah, like there. you wouldn't believe how many times, Orange, man. White, blue. I was at the Stellar Awards trying to meet with the gospel executives, trying to get a deal. You wouldn't believe how many times I flew to Nashville trying to meet with the people. And, you know, I'm going to just call them the people. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And just you would believe how many times. That I tried right and tried, there. and I was right there. They were like, oh, yeah, man, you're so talented. We got you. And then the next day, they didn't sign somebody else, and they all over the world. So does, does Travis Malloy have a issue with leadership? Submitting under that type of leadership? Under what kind of leadership? Like, so I hear, like, you know, when mom, it's mm -hmm. like, man, I got to get on up out of here, mm -hmm. you know. I got a little bigger than this pastor, so it's a little friction. Mm -hmm. So does the pop does the does the problem lie with the leadership, or or is it like something that you always just kind of like, man, hey, if it ain't rocking that way, I gotta skate, or do you know when it's time to leave? Well, you know that's a great question, and I and I understand why you asked that. I never really had a problem with leadership. Sometimes I do battle with people who are not able or have the capacity to believe at the level I believe. That was pretty good right there. And, you know, so for me, it's like, man, if you're not able to believe at the level, I have to be around people who believe at my level. Got it. And that's why I always talk about having good people around you mm -hmm. that can believe at the level that you, but all my friends believe at my level. Got I it. don't care what I tell them. If when I fly to LA, I say, drive me through Beverly Hills and, 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 and Hollywood Hills. Drive me through because I need to pick my crib. And we drive together and be like, okay, we like this. Mm. You know, and I've been doing that for years. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I remember, you know, being out of church in my hometown and uh, the pastor pulled me in and he was like, hey, man, um, I see you, you know, moving and shaking. And, and I've seen the doors that you've hit and the doors that's closed. And I think you should take a break and go to school. And he's like, let's go pick a school. I'll pay for it. You know how many kids would want to hear that? And I was, I was devastated when he said that to me. Why devastation? I was devastated. Because it was somebody that I looked up to like a father. Mm -hmm. And I didn't hear, I'll pay for school. I heard, I don't believe in you. Man, you know it's funny. And mom would probably be mad if I say this. But well, mama, I love you. You know I love you no matter what, child. We gonna ride together no matter what. You know that. All day. And she probably don't remember this, but I remember when I hit like 30 and all them records, because you and I, we have a similar story. Like I, I'm signed to Universal. Nelly sell 30 million records. I sell 30. I become an entrepreneur and I'm like, okay, cool. Now I got a Warner Brothers deal. Mm -hmm. You know, I get a quarter million dollars the first day and we like, yo, let's go. We, we, we're on. And then, I come off this record with Tank and we about to blow up and everything's going good. And I say this crazy prayer that if it's not for me, then it's not for me. Lord, take it away. And then he calls and Naeem Ali calls and says, man, I know he's going to do it, but we're going to move in a new direction. We're going to go with this young kid named J-Rock, who <laughs> later becomes J-Rock and the rest of mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just like, oh my God, like every time something's coming. Mm -hmm. So I become 30 and I start telling him about this thing called YouTube. 
Mm. And I'm like, yo, we blowing up on YouTube. My phone is never going to stop ringing. It's going to be dope. I'm doing mm -hmm. these things. And I remember one time my mama said, nah, baby, you getting old and you got a family. Mm -hmm. And I knew she was just trying to be yeah. a mom to kind of be cautious of what it is. And all I heard was, I don't believe no more. Man. So you, so, so. It, it was like, it was like a, that, ooh. Man, that connects with the, but that connects with the question you asked me about leadership. So it wasn't that my mom didn't believe. It was that she's a human being who's never jumped like I jumped. Yeah. So the truth is when things will get rough, it'd be like, all right, you sounded good, but I need you to go get a job because I need some help. You know what I mean? So the, 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 like, woo. Yeah, like, woo. Job. So I'm going, yeah, so it was that vibe. So for yeah. me, it was like, so this is the part that I want to connect to the pastor who offered to pay for school. My mind went to why are you willing to pay for school but not I invest guess. in music mm -hmm. and a lot of times people only invest in what they connect to mm -hmm. doesn't mean that he didn't believe in me mm -hmm. but education is what made him who he is today yeah so that's what he is able to connect to that's his space you know mm -hmm. what i mean everybody's not willing to invest in music and we do know that you know this is an industry where it's you know <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's, it's a gamble. Yeah. But I feel like if you believe enough, because the truth is you investing in school, you ain't getting no return on that. Not at all. At all. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can put 50K into a song and at least get 10,000 back. Like, something going to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Something yeah. going to pop. Yeah. So for me, that's what I heard. And, and again, I needed to be around people who have jumped. Yeah. Everybody don't jump. I don't care. Listen. Even if you make a million dollars today and you went to college and you went and got a job and they pushed you up the chain, you didn't really jump. You mm -hmm. kind of followed the, but jumping mm -hmm. is when I got in my car and drove to Los Angeles and took us 48 hours, three days, 72 hours to get to Los Angeles and moved in with a friend and was sleeping on a mattress for six months and going to studios and writing hooks. That's jumping. Jumping is moving to Atlanta. When your birthday? I'm a Scorpio, November 21st. November 21st. Okay, so we, cool. So we emotional. We'll cuss yeah. you out and then cry in five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, so I'm in December. Like, I didn't ever know we had them, because that's what we did. We drove yeah. 48 hours because we had a van. Uh -huh. And I was like, we're getting off the Chitlin circuit. Exactly. We're going to move by van. <laughs> it's the, that, that's who I am. I'm a hustler. I'm a, I'm a shaker. If, I don't care what it is. I was going to go. Man, yeah. when we was singing at those Koji conventions and the National Baptist conventions, we was getting in our cars and we was driving. My manager at the time, Uncle Bill, I mean, we were everywhere mm -hmm. just trying to be heard, you know. Yeah. And then in 2009, we connected with J. Drew. Shout out to my brother, J. Drew Shear. Oh, he produced my first album at 21 years old. Wow. Because he believed. Yeah. No paperwork, no contract, no money, no nothing. He said, wow. I believe. Get to Detroit. Him and Kier. They produced my first album. I stayed at Karen Clark Sheard's house That's for a like nice house. a month. Really? I don't even know if they know I was there. I was in the basement. <laughs> yeah, uh, come on. <laughs> Listen, this, this is the greatest. This is not. This is not that type of house. Yeah, this, over it, there. It's the, it's the kind of house where they might not yeah, have even known. Know, yeah. Nah, Mom and Karen, she knew. Um, J. Drew just really believed in. Wow. And she was like a mom to me, you know what I mean? She believed in me, you know, and we were like a real family. Um, so just to see even Bishop Shear be the presiding prelate of the National yeah. Church of God in Christ is incredible, you know, because this was... So you know all it, of this stuff. Yeah, you grew man. up in this culture. Yeah, man. so so that was that was 2009. You know, we were there working on the album. I released my first album September 2nd of 2009. Yeah. And then years later, I connected with a guy named Corey Rooney yeah. and did a production deal with him and that grew and then... I just went into this entrepreneur space. And then in years, I started getting more comfortable with doing R&B and gospel. You know, we live in a society where when God gives you multiple gifts, the world tries to force you to pick one. So That's for right. many years, you're talking about battle. Let's take off the table just trying to get a record deal. Let's, let's put on the table me being okay with writing love songs and not being crucified by the church because yeah. I am the guy that can write a worship song for Tasha Cobb and write a sex song for Tank. Yeah. <laughs> so you worshiping and having sex at the same time. <laughs> I'm you not doing it at the same song. time. It's, it's, more like a, it's more like a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thing. <laughs> I, I, I want to I I go there since you, since you went there with Let's the do it. love. You are now currently single and you've been single for how long? I've been single for seven years. What was the relationship before 
you were single. Was it really serious? It was very serious. We were together for four and a half years. And um, she was, she taught me a lot. I used to hear people say that and I used to be like sounding, like in my mind I was bitter. Like, ugh, if I ever broke up, I wouldn't be talking about, you know, she taught yeah. me, no, she really taught me a lot. She taught me a lot about myself. She's the first woman I ever was with that actually studied how to love me. She's who taught me about the love languages. I, I have an entire album that I wrote about the love mm -hmm. languages because she taught me, you know, a lot of times people, that thing is deep. Yeah. When you think about yeah. studying how to love somebody and what people, you know, identify being loved with. Yeah. Um, so she taught me a lot. She was an amazing songwriter. Oh, um, so she was a songwriter. Yeah. But, you know, we broke up because we was both broke. When Y'all both might be doing pretty good now. Any chance for her to come back? Well, you know, she she is doing really well. Hey, are you doing pretty when good, we, Justin? When we broke up, she's in a relationship now. We haven't spoken in a very long time. Um, you, I, I feel like doing it. Look right in that camera if you could. Right, 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 right. I'm right. just playing. I'm just playing. But, I don't but, want you to come get me, big but, dog. But you know what's crazy? You know, we needed each other for that season. Mm -hmm. And we needed to be separate because the moment we broke up, we were, we were so, you know, when you broke, you just be fighting over everything and anything. We were broke. So it's like, we were just arguing over anything, but it really didn't have nothing to do with each other. It was just, we was, we had no money yeah. and it was kind of long distance. She was here and I was still in my hometown. But the moment we decided to split ways and her, you know, jump into her songwriting and me jump into my music and my apparel, my brand blew up. The music started going crazy. She blew up as a songwriter. I don't know if you've ever heard the song, uh, I See You by Coco Jones. Yeah. Mm. So she wrote that song. Well, everybody's Googling the writer at this point. <laughs> ain't, no need to, ain't no need to say her name. Y'all Google it, it send it, it to me, put it in the comments. All day. But yeah. you know what? She's an incredible songwriter. She's an incredible human being, and I wish nothing but the best for her. That was so and, politically And correct. you know who she's who You she's miss her, with. though? Um, I miss her friendship. Okay. I miss her friendship. Do you compare... Do you find yourself, because she took took the time to study you, do you find yourself looking at the people that come across your desk and, a part, and a, across your path like, but you don't love me like the way she did? Well, the problem is I got to Atlanta and started dating strippers. It's the <laughs> hair. Strippers? Why strippers? <laughs> Would you, were you going to two-day strippers or you were just going to enjoy yourself and, and T-Pain? Can I be honest with you? Yes, Lord. That's the only way we like it. I'm, I don't smoke. I don't drink. Me neither. No man, hookah, though. no none of that. But it was my first experience. The chicken wasn't. My first experience was almost like getting high because it was something I had never done. Oh, you hadn't been nowhere. Like, yeah, I mean, I had, but I had never been in a place where, you know, every five feet is a BBL. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? So you a deer in the head. Like I ain't never seen no booty that big before. So it yeah. was crazy. Yeah. So I get here and it's just like, you know what I mean? So, and you got to understand a lot of times the kind of guys that strippers date or bottle girls date are guys that are often in strip clubs and in clubs and lounges. I don't go to, I don't go to nothing like that. Yeah. So I'm meeting these women in the mall, restaurants, you know, the things oh, like so that. you weren't meeting them in their, nah. in their, in their dominant No, environment. not at that time. I've only been to a strip club one time. But you was meeting them at the mall. But I was meeting them at restaurants at the mall and we would meet and we would talk and, and then two weeks later, they would tell me, oh, yeah, I'm a dancer. But by then, I'm already in. You know what I'm saying? So, I, And then I kind of started connecting to their heart more than their body, obviously. Because, you know, men are visual. So we see the booty. But then it's like, oh, you actually are a sweetheart. I can actually tell that you see more for yourself than just being a dancer. And, you know, you had a business plan. You know, I'm making excuses. But she got a business plan. Got a business plan she got, right she, right? Ma, she's cute. Did you, you take know? them to church? She went, you know, I, I, I've experienced that, too. That's good. You know. I hadn't even been to a strip club yet. You know the first person to take me to a strip club? Don't say one in the past. No, I'm not one of the okay, past. Okay, praise the Lord. It was Ray J. Ray J will take you to the strip Ray club. Ray J is the first person to take me to a strip if club. We have one. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the studio and kind of working on his uh his album and he just stopped in the middle of working on, you know, listening to music and was like, I want to go to Magic City. And, you know, that was my first time working with him at the time. So I wasn't trying to lose the opportunity. So I said, all right, we're going to Magic City. You know, get the Saints together. We're going. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And I ended up in Magic City and I was just, 
I couldn't handle it, man. It was what, tra- is, what does Travis' wife look like now, seeing that you you really discovered a measure of success now? Because you're not the same broke dude who was next to this girl arguing about <laughs> who going to pay for dinner at the end of it <laughs> where we going to eat. Does it become a little harder for you now in your picking, considering now that there's a level of success and notoriety? Uh, you know what? There, there's two levels to that. You know, regardless of how rich you are or how wealthy you are or how good you're doing, you know what I mean? I, I wouldn't say I'm a very rich man, but I'm doing okay for myself. I like to be careful what I'm saying on camera. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing all right. But the truth is women are expensive, especially in our culture. You know, it's very hard to find a woman who's not looking for somebody to just take care of them and take care of everything. You know what I mean? So, and I, and I'm not saying that the people who do that, there's something wrong with that, but you know, I was raised by a single mom who was a hustler and I'm not saying that, you know, that you need to be that. But what I am saying is I do love a woman who wants to do something. You know, nowadays it's like, I just want to be cute on Instagram. No, I actually want to meet a woman that's like, hey, you know, I want to open up a hair salon and I want to, you know, drop my apparel line and I want to be a motivational speaker or I want to do something. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just be cute and, you know, waiting on a Chanel bag every six months. You know what I mean? So it's, 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 it's different when it comes to that. It's more so about finding somebody who wants to bring something to the table. And Besides I know that's you. a big thing. Besides, been, somebody just said that. We've that's been talking what, about what guess bringing said. something Why to the table. Why we got to bring something to the table? Yeah, and it's like, you know. She says she is the table. Yeah, they say that and they don't, they don't, what does that mean? Yeah. I bring peace. I had peace before you got here. What else you got? <laughs> you know, so I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what, <laughs> What's going on? Man, man of God, you preaching. Yeah, like, so don't, I don't want to hear nothing about, you know, I cook. Yeah, I, somebody's I cook. doing that already, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I got a chef that cooks for me, too, sometimes. So yeah. it's like, you know, what else are you bringing to the table? And again, you know, everything isn't for everybody. I think you should do what works for your household. Yeah. Because a lot of times, these young girls are actually being mentored by rich baby moms of rappers. I didn't know that. Yeah, so when you got a baby mom of a rapper who's rich who don't got to do nothing, and you're telling these young girls, go get you a nigga who's going to take care of you. Jeez. It just creates. A different, yeah. It, it creates something that and it puts a lot of pressure on black men because they say that statistically the average household brings in $50,000 a year. Mm. That ain't no money to take care of nobody. Not at all. That's what they're saying statistically. So let's just break it down. I want to break it down because a lot of people don't break it down. $50,000 a year is about $43 to $4,500 a month before taxes. Yeah. The average two bedroom is $3,300. Yeah. He ain't no money. What you taking care of? So then you've pressed these young black men to start going and robbing, scamming, selling drugs. Yeah. Because they feel like that's the only way you're going to want them. Man, a little piece ain't never made me going to rob nobody. <laughs> I'm looking right in this camera. Young but boys, that's a real deal. Take. But that's a real deal out here, man. So, so listen, I'm, I'm kind of getting it. So, fall in love, really like a stripper. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard anything about daddy. For Travis Malloy, where was daddy in the equation? You know what? You're very great at what you do. Yeah. You're the first person out of every interview I've probably ever done in my entire career to ask about my dad. Yeah. So my dad passed away when I was 13 to prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And so he died at the year I needed him the most. And I like to connect that story to how, why rich people are so depressed. I'm going to tell you. When my dad passed away at 13, he left me so much money from his pension and his social security for years that that was the medicine to my pain. I didn't start dealing with his death till the money stopped. There's a lot of Mm. celebrities that never really have to deal with the pain because they have so much money. But at the point where the money stopped and I couldn't afford to go anywhere, I couldn't afford to 
go get on a $2 million yacht and lay up with 10 women to mask the pain or go buy a house in Beverly Hills and mask the pain. I had to deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it, it was rough. So now that goes back to the friction between me and my mom. It was friction because I missed my dad. It mm -hmm. had nothing to do with her. So while I'm chasing a dream, I'm devastated that my dad is not here to watch me. Mm -hmm. You know, at 13, he saw me play the piano, but he didn't get to see me start my group in the ninth grade. He didn't get to see me do my first album at 21. He didn't get to see me be on, you know, TV for the first time. He didn't get to see me write for Fred Hammond. You know what I mean? So dealing with that trauma mm. at the same time what was would, rough. I do, I do want to say, I thank God that he was able to introduce you to a different relationship with money, though. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's the one thing my dad being an ex-sharecropper didn't necessarily have a lot of money. But when I turned, because he was so old and he had retired, uh, my bad dad, but you know, hell, 91, now nah, you was old in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you gonna laugh at this too when you right, watch like, right, yeah, you right. tell the truth, right. hell I was. Oh. Right. But I ended up getting a check for like $500, $700 every single month from mm. his pension every single year. So, I mean, excuse me, every single month while I was in high school, junior, senior year. Exactly. So same. I looked like the dope boy. Same. They think I'm out here hustling, Same. hustling. And my crew I was, is. I was the only one in high school with a car. Yeah, like up I got with Monte Carlo truck, SS with of the stuff. T top. So I'm yeah, out here, I'm yeah. talking about jewelry just like everybody yeah. else. And here was the thing like, it taught me a relationship with money. So my expectation has always been different than most people. I'm like, we supposed to have money. We not supposed to live in lack. Like, yeah. this is the way we're supposed to do. So I thank God for that. My question, though, honestly, um, because I want to like create a bridge of healing, if there was one word, that what's your father's name? William Bill Malloy. Man, that's that's so dope. That's so dope. Yeah, yeah. So, if William right now, if there were some words that you could have could hear from William Bill Malloy right now, seeing millions, billions, trillions on an upward swing, one of the most influential brands to ever come out of anything that had to do with kingdom. Wow. I'm going through different things that's like, okay, like that mainstream literally is, is grab a hold to what words would you like to hear your father say if there were just a few words that could give your spirit comfort? If you could have heard these words when you seen it go viral that day you woke up and everybody was wearing. You know, that's, uh, that's such a, it's such a broad question because there's so many words. Yeah. But my dad was actually a man of very few words, but mm -hmm. he was a real cool guy. Mm -hmm. He was like, you know, he 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 was the vibe of uh, Greg Leakes. Mm. Old Tom. school, yeah. cool, yeah. you know, yeah. quick with it. He would have been like, I'm proud of you. That's my son. That's my son. You know, he he wasn't very spiritual guy. He was, yeah. he was like, you know, he was a Rolling Stone. I mean, yeah. if I could just, yeah, you know, say, you already know. He evidently has some money uh, to pay for it. All day. So he was, he was, <laughs> he was very, you know, yeah. a man of very few words, but a very good man. Good stuff. And, uh, you know, it's. Uh, I'm proud of you. That's my son. Yeah. yeah. Just, just hearing that, him saying that that's my son. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Him and my mom were were not together the entire my entire life. Mm -hmm. You know, I was born in a a very peculiar situation. Got it. Um, and I don't talk about it much, but I don't mind because it's life. Yeah. And I'm not, you know, I'm not held captive by anything. But my mm -hmm. dad was married mm -hmm. at the time that he Secrecy. was out being a, a Rolling Stone. I think that's what they call yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> out yeah. doing his thing. Yeah. So, you know, I was born to what it had, could look like in shame. Mm. And my mom was going to abort me because she was so shameful that she had, you know, gotten pregnant by a married man. And um, so just all of the trauma of that, mm. you know, there's times where, you know, my mom and my dad, they have so many pictures together. But because, you know, his what? former wife's family, you know, see me and watch me, sometimes I'm still... I don't want to post pictures of my mom and my dad because that was around the time that he was married to their mom or, you know what I mean? So I've dealt with things like that. And were you acknowledged at the funeral as a son? Oh, I was acknowledged, but I wasn't there. I didn't go. Was that your choice or? <laughs> we might have to do a part two. Um, yeah. That was uh, my choice. Okay. Uh, 
And you probably look just like him. You know, I do. That death is probably my biggest fear in the entire world. Wow. And at 13, I didn't want my last memory of my dad to be in a box. Do you regret that at all? No, because it helps me. I don't, I don't have a choice but to see him alive. Visual. See, a lot of people, you know, in our culture, we will go to funerals. And me and my best friend, Jay, we, we joke about this a lot of times. But black people, you know, we will go to a, a wake and sit and stare at a body for six hours and sing songs. I don't want to look at no, you know, it's traumatizing to look at a lifeless body that you love in a box. That is very tough. And so I decided not to do that even at 13 mm -hmm. with my own father, mm -hmm. because my last memories of him were, even though he was sickly, being in the bed with me watching the Jeffersons, mm -hmm. being in the bed with me listening to, you know, Vanessa Bell and John V. Key, you know what I mean? Was just, he a musician too? He was not a musician. Well, he, he, he was just a hardworking man. My dad worked for UPS for 31 years. So yeah, you did have a nice little bit of a pinch. <laughs> so he was a good man. He was a hardworking man. You know what I mean? He didn't, he paid my mom, gave my mom money for me. He came and picked me up every Saturday. You know what I mean? And you know, obviously until he got sick, his wife actually passed years before he got sick. Mm -hmm. So the love of a black woman when he got sick, my mother moved him in our home. Wow. And so he you got a chance to. And he died in our house. Oh, they loved each other. So I never got to live with my dad until he got sick. They loved each other. Definitely. He was just he just was in a tough situation. Definitely. The girl that he loved, he he had married her. He had married somebody before he met the girl. Yeah, yeah. And and you know. She she kept me. I'm here. She yeah, did, she, did, might, yeah, she yeah. didn't she didn't get rid of me. That's good. It's so funny. She always tells me the story. She was in the club with my aunt and a couple friends, and mm -hmm. a man walked in with a big gift. And she was like, oh my God. And she was in there contemplating aborting me. She's like, I gotta get rid of this baby. I, this, this, this is crazy. Man walks in with this big gift with a bow on it. And she said, I want a gift like that. And he looked at her and said, Have a baby and I'll get you one. Wow. And that was her sign. She said, I'm having this baby. She always calls me her J-Baz baby. And she says she carried me for 10 months instead of nine months. That's what she, that's what yes, she, Lord. I wasn't here to prove that, but she <laughs> said she carried me for 10 months. And, um, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm the entrepreneur. I'm the first entrepreneur of the family. Yeah. I'm the first person in my immediate family outside of my dad that did not go to college. My yeah. mom, my brother, my sister, my nephew, they all got degrees, yeah. masters, all kinds of stuff. But I didn't see that as a direct path for me. I jumped yeah. straight into music and entrepreneur. And, you know, and they're very proud of me. Yeah. Very, very I'm, proud. I'm going to be honest with you. This, this is just going to be confirmation and Prophet can, can attest to it. He probably want to tell you, you are everything that he always wanted to be. I mean, you wow. are literally everything that he was afraid to be. Wow. Just because the same thing that happened with you as it pertains to the man who wanted you to go to school, he shrunk instead of booting mm. up. And he decided to get a job when he was so much bigger than the job, but he stewarded the job as if it was big as his dreams, goals, and visions. Mm. And like literally, I just feel in my spirit to tell you that everything ends here. And so there's no need for Travis to go be anybody's hero because you needed one at 13. Sometimes we become what we needed. We, because we needed a That's hero, good. we'll become everybody's hero. Wow. And, and you, you actually start attracting people who just, oh, they just need something to need something. I pray that you would have those standards with these other people who are supposed to come into your life as you have for those who steward your dream. Because you mm -hmm. said, the only reason I can't get up under your leadership is because you ain't, you ain't visualizing and seeing it the way I see it. So it's the same as it becomes to relationships who are going to be close to your heart. You're mm -hmm. nobody's hero. Man, that's confirmation. You wouldn't believe how many people I had to cash up in Zelle today. Just yeah. because of just being the savior. It's because they know. And um, and they, know, I, they can smell it on you. Yeah, they can smell yeah. it. They can smell. It. He's a hero. He's the nice guy. He's just there another. Yeah. And that that goes with codependency and yeah. you know just having that thing. And here's the thing: I'm nobody's psychologist. I'm nobody's yeah. prophet. I'm a person not only who who who's been through it, but I'm also a person who's overcome. It. Yeah, yeah. And I'm and I'm walking through. I'm it. like, you know what? No, no, no. I'm okay if yeah. you drown. 
Because yeah. I didn't push you in the water. <laughs> I didn't push you in that water. Somebody hit me to, to, today. I need two thousand dollars to just another. Normally, I know the text message. Mm -hmm. Don't want to. Dun, dun, dun. I said, "Well, how you get in that situation?" Man, I've been. I've literally. I've been a slave to people for years, man. And I'm not even saying again. I ain't no super rich guy out here. So even the days that I can't afford it, I'd be trying to pull it out of a hat yeah. to be able to help because somebody asked, man. I've, yeah. I've done it. And I get that from my mom. Yeah. Man, I was raised in a house where everybody lived with us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> everybody lived with us. You know what I mean? I call my mom like, oh, my friend is going through that. Yeah. But I'm you got to protect this. Yeah. yeah. No, this is the other thing. It's the truth. You got to listen to them boys that you got in your space. That's the truth. And they going to tell you, they going to be some other eyes. The prophet is hard on me. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd be like, no, Prophet. I feel it. No, I, no, no. If he say it. I'd be like, Prophet, I got to help. He'd be like, uh-uh, we ain't doing that We today. ain't doing that. <laughs> because cause there are certain people who come into your life for your blind spots, not only for your blind mm. spots spiritually. It's not even about the money. That's true. It's about music. Oh, you something. Yeah. I love millions, billions, trillions. Yeah. But that arm owes you something. But you know what's crazy? My God sister, she's actually... Uh, one of my partners in Millions, Billions, Trillions, she freed me a few years ago um, when I was dealing with the music side. She said, you don't always reap from the same place as you sow. Mm -hmm. That had to free me mm -hmm. because the many people that I had on the hook, I just busted out crying when she said that to me. Mm -hmm. You will believe how many gospel artists have made promises to me. You will, all them, a lot of them that have been sitting at your desk have said, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do that for you. And then you can't reach them. You'll be surprised how many. And, and you know what? <laughs> Here's what brings the conflict. You ready? Mm -hmm. When I see more people in the mainstream world willing to sow and help more than the people that I dedicated my life to. Mm -hmm. You got to understand, I turned down R&B record deals at 18 and 19 years old. Because I loved gospel. So to chase gospel for 15 years and they all closed the door on me. Mm -hmm. When I closed the door on what probably would have made me a million dollars at, at 19. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, the rejection, you know, getting rejected from people that you love mm -hmm. is, is, is terrible. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've, I've, I've dealt with that and I've walked through that. But I truly believe that millions, billions, trillions was not just a moneymaker for me. It was an eye opener mm. for me as well. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I got you. Yeah. And, and all those seeds that you saw, all that money you spent sowing to go sing at this convention and that convention because you thought something was going to happen. I gave it back and I'm giving it back even more. Uh -huh. And we're just getting started. I love it. We're just getting started. So I'm, just I'm not, started. I had to let all those people off the hook because I thought they all owed me. Yeah. But we serve a kind of God where you can sow in gospel and sow in music and reap in millions, billions, trillions. That's so good. You can sow in Pittsburgh and I, I've sowed my life in Pittsburgh and I'm reaping in Atlanta. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So that, that, that yeah, that's where we are today. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I've, I've been God. able to let a lot of those people off the hook and not be bitter anymore. So now when I see them, I'm jumping and I'm hugging on them. Like, Hey man, yeah. so good to see you. I got a shirt for you. Yeah. I don't remind them like, nah, you don't yeah. remember you said you was going to jump on this song? And they got to hit you. <laughs> exactly. Look at your, go like this on your Exactly. Table. No, that's real. One of your, you know, having to, you know, navigate as an entrepreneur, a man of God, keeping your confidence while facing not just rejection, but words. I always talk about seeds, bad seeds from good people. Yeah. Because sometimes there are good people who don't realize they're sowing discord. No, that's real. That's real. So when I was battling R&B and gospel, you know, one of your favorite gospel singers told me, if you, if you start doing R&B, the gospel community will never accept you back. That's sad. That's what they told me. Man, well, listen, now you're in a place where God accepts you. Jesus is 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 literally working through a surrendered life. And that's just what I see. And I'm just thankful that you would feel safe enough to share your truth with, with us. Yeah. And, and like say, man, listen, it's so much more than music. It's so much more than branding. It's so much more that I've overcome to get to a place where I actually love me more. And yes. it's apparent that you definitely love yourself more 
than the issues that you've had to overcome. So I thank God for you, brother. Willie Moore, you got to put a bow on it because I feel like right now we kind of like out in the water and it oh, looked yeah. like it looked like I sell shirts and I date strippers. I need you to clean that up for me. I need you to clean that up. Hey, clean listen, it up for me. You know, you know, put putting on a bow on it, putting a bow, <laughs> putting on a bow, putting a bow on such a beautiful gift wow. is, is probably one of the easiest things to do. You know, what I like to do in these interviews, like I attempt to make sure that you understand the backstory, to make sure that you understand on this journey of life that you're not alone. Like what the enemy will attempt to make you do. And of course, to my people who have different metaphysical orientations, this may not apply to you, but the opposing party for you, like he'll make you think that you're walking down and traveling down a road that's like so alone. And here's the reason why, because we live in a social media age, an age where we're going to put a highlight reel out there. We're going to look good. We're going to pick up the mm -hmm. correct angle and everybody's just going to click like, 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 and you become a slave to the likes and you continue to put in a beautiful highlight reel. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, we all got stuff that we had to navigate through. And there's a lot more that we have to navigate through. You know, today we had the opportunity to see a man who worked very, very hard in the music industry, like literally sowing his own seed to make sure that he gets to the venue, making sure that he created enough work in the industry to get his name out there. And I just believe by faith that there's so many people who are going to watch this interview and say, man, maybe it was something that I can do. I want you to forgive yourself because it was nothing that you can do for a man who has such a calling on his life because every part of his walk has been data. You win some and you learn some, but baby, you never lose. And so it's my prayer that you had the opportunity to see a person who may seemingly look like. He was walking in a loft, sleeping on couches, sleeping in people's houses. Even though mama had a house, he knew that there was something else that he had to do. And he was grabbing, grabbing, grabbing. And then a pandemic comes. And God reminds him of a vision that he gave him four months ago. And he said, do you remember what I told you? And that becomes a question to you. Do you remember what God told you? I know, I know. People try to talk you out of it. I know your environment didn't create a safe space for you to walk that thing out. I know you start drinking, smoking, living in habits or what have you, and you think that disqualified you for the promise that God gave you. That's a lie. And Travis Malloy is the proof. That if you just follow what God has called you to do in that moment, and you don't have to have the answers. You just got to have the vision. So if you have the vision today, do the first thing Travis did. He said he wrote it down. And when he wrote it down, he began to get people to come. And somebody did a website. I believe this. A small step is still a step. If you take that one step, I believe that God will start to send the allies that you need to birth a vision that can be as impactful as what Travis is doing. You say, Willie, I ain't in clothing. You say, Willie, I don't want to be an entrepreneur. It just so happened that the Bible says that to just we got to live by faith. It sucks that he didn't say that we hit faith out the park one time and it's over. He said we got to live by it. And because we have to live by it, you got to step out on faith on the last thing that God told you to do. Even if you got a date of stripper or two, I still believe there's a vision that God has for you. And I love you. But it's important that you love you more. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment. What an amazing conversation. I don't know why I'm teary-eyed. Let's get that out the way. But the good thing is when you're hanging out with Travis Malloy, you don't have to live that way. <laughs> because your future's so bright, you got to wear shades. Flat All out. All day. <laughs> MBT.